Boys, 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 what's up? Um, this is going to be a little showcase about Ardeen, the newest physical DPS that came to Last Claudia, um, being a neutral and uh, attribute attacker via fire and earth. Um, he has some pretty interesting mechanics, and uh, why don't we just go over those first? Um, we did talk about him a little bit on the podcast last night, so if you missed that, go ahead and check that out on Buddha's channel whenever it releases. I believe it's 6 p.m. Uh, EST today. But let's talk about him. So, his abilities, right? Um, as a soldier, as a, you know, strength-boosted physical attacker, he has some interesting mechanics to his abilities. Um, his S1 is going to be a very small... Uh, it's like a leap. It has to be in line of, pretty close line of sight. It jumps behind the enemy through its animation. So it's a really good way of getting behind the uh, behind a boss, per se. Um, then follow that up with a crazy caliber, which is a, like a sawed-off shotgun type skill, which pretty much reaches the entire map, but you can shoot at close range. It has no like movement that you need to place yourself in. Like He doesn't need to run around in front of the enemy at all. You can literally sit in the smallest of areas and just spam this off. Um, it'll hit pretty much the entire map behind of where he's shooting. Um, Assault Trip is his S3. That's going to be your warp. That's going to be getting into position. That's going to be wanting or what you're wanting to use in like arena to, you know, warp to an enemy and, and hit them with your uh, 16 hit, 32 hit skill. Dual wield. Um, does some really good damage. Launches, launches them into the air if they're flinchable. But his S2... As I said, it was spammable. Um, that is definitely his highest DPS skill. Um, sitting behind an enemy, especially rocking surprise attack backstab while a boss is sitting the other west or looking the other way. Dude, he can hit for some crazy, crazy damage. Um, his all cool animation. I just don't think it's that very useful. I don't think it's very useful for him. Um, damage wise, I think it's more just an enabler if you have demon stern if you have power counter to use for that extra damage when it's the alkyd is full I, I i don't think it's a very good damage all but see so as to his traits trickster boost skill with seal um skills cannot be stacked is then we'll go into his kid just a little bit um to talk to talk about switching these out with the seals um Battle start, recover MP 10% cool out of activate seal power charge so this activates one of his seals at the beginning of battle which is kind of nice Rebellion, physical damage, physical cap, uh, physical more physical cap against bosses, and then as you take hits, you gradually boost strength. Um, and assumedly, this is 1% per hit, so if you hit 50 times, you get 50% max damage. Um, and yet to be confirmed, but that's the assumption. Alright, being a neutral attacker, what, what does he bring to the table? Number one, he does have an anima. Um, this is the first time we've seen an anima with a defensive debuff uh this does stack with your blazers your super bad chemicals your theopolis arc skill um not our arc skill but uh arc passive these do stack so you can get up to 70 percent down on defense using the theo um, passive 55 percent with your super bad chemicals or 55 percent with your uh, high high drain um 45 percent with your super bad chemicals and you know 40 percent with your normal blazer so that's an extremely lot. That's an extremely high amount of defense debuffs, and I think if anyone's played this game for a little bit, defense buffs or like even stat buffs in general, stackable stat debuffs do a lot, a lot to an enemy's like viability. So this hard, this combined with other debuffs, hard nukes an enemy's defense, which we'll see in a little bit. Um, seal power charge, seal poison charge, heavy charge, flame call, stone call, and dragon buster. These are all okay. So let's explain these. These are all activatable at one at, any, one at any given time in battle. So when you activate them, they'll become a seal. Um, and you'll see the buff on your person. But it says at the end, it says when set plus strength plus 10%. That says when set. All that means is that in your um, in your inventory or your, your skill page like I have here, as long as this is green and lit, it's set. So you'll get that passive effect regardless. If it's set like this, you'll get that strength plus 10%, even if you don't have it active. That's an important distinction. But what these do for him is these essentially make him this into a super multi-dimensional attacker. Okay. So power charge. Cat boost, damage boost, or cost of MP. That's pretty standard. That's really nice to have considering he's no attribute attacker. 
just getting an extra boost of damage. Nice. But what he also has is he can be an, an ailment spammer. By ailment spammer, I mean specifically poison, but as an enabler to your other units using Terror Mouth. And, you know, someone might be using Venocleave to get that plus 50% damage against poison enemies. Like, this is a very enabling ailment. Um, not only that is, this is one of the only times we've seen on skills. This enables his skills to actually apply ailments. Um, poison in itself is not very highly resisted amongst amongst enemy bosses especially. So this is definitely useful for enabling your unit for Terror Mouth and getting some extra damage for your other units. Um, heavy Charge. This is for your breaking. This is going to dump an extra 100% break into his kit. I mean, you can add extra break as well using the Jaleled Axe from Godforge, the Iron Pipe from the Near Collab. You can use Breaker Passive, Axe Side Boost, stuff like that. But this is going to be additive along that with another 100% break. Um, and of course, when set, do more damage to fainter broken enemies. Flame Call and Stone Call. These are pretty much just attribute converters for all of his skills. Um, Notably, this is not regular attacks, it's just skill attacks, so you will be able to still use Goddess Kiss if he's going to be hitting enemies um, and trying to get MP back. Normally with no, nothing not attribute, but Flame Call, Stone Call. The only reason you'd be using these is if either the enemy is probably neutral or weak to this to this, um, to this this attribute. Because he does have weak point boost in his kit, so you're probably going to be wanting to be switching these if you want to do eke out the max damage. Uh, Flame Call and Stone Call are a good shout if they're weak. Um, Dragon Buster is his, probably his main drawing point in here, uh, and something many people have seen or are being interested in when they saw his kit. Um, skill attacks use 50 MP for damage, plus one or plus dam for damage plus 100%, and a 59,999 damage cap against dragons. Now, I should explain this just a little bit. Skill attacks use 50 MP for damage. This is a ton of MP. So you're going to be walking into the battle that you're fighting the enemy with. Um... And hopefully you've regened or, you know, started with a lot of MP um, in his kit. And you're going to be skip trying to spam the skills and do as much damage as possible. Um, that's my idea. That's what we're going to roll with. We're going to go fight Mardigate in a little bit. But I should explain about the damage cap. The damage cap. 59,999 damage cap against dragons. What this does say is that it says 59,999. It does not say plus 59,999. This, like, for example, Steel Stone Call. Damage cap plus 5,000. This gives an extra 5,000 cap on all of the other cap rates that he has in his kit. Dragon Buster essentially says the damage cap equals 59,999. That's a set hard cap damage cap. You cannot raise this with um, any other cap raises like Scarlet Blade, like Council of Ten. Nothing else in his in this kit or arc is going to raise this cap whenever he's fighting dragons and he has this activated. But what that does mean is that when you're fighting dragons, you don't have to worry about any cap raises. You can build straight for physical damage. Um, you do not have to be worried about adding Hail Sovereign's key or Phantom Tower key or Phantom Sovereign, Hail Sovereign's ring, Phantom Tower key, Scarlet Blade is paid. None of that. You just build straight for damage. So I think that's kind of interesting. I, I do like that's a little side grade to like what we've been doing um, capping out their damage and, and hard capping it. I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, as to passives and things that I would suggest on him, MP ups for sure. If you're going to be know you're going to be fighting dragons, especially for 50 MP per skill, or if you know you know you're going to be using a ton of skills in battle, MP ups are very very good on him. Um, attack ups sure. Proud force if you need it. That's one thing he's notably missing from his kit is proud force. So definitely throw that on him. I will say, going back to Dragon Buster, this is not a replacement for Dragon Slayer. Essentially, this physical attacks against dragons, uh, physical attacks are effective against dragons when set. This is a boost to dragon damage against dragons, but is not an equivalent of Dragon Slayer. It is, a, it is definitely less effective than Dragon Slayer. So we're, you're going to still want to equip the Slayer for dragons to do max damage. Um, and I retested that a little bit yesterday, seeing the difference between equipping this and not equipping this, and it's, it's a pretty big difference. So, um... Speed I love on him because his S2 is so spammable. Um, definitely run around and shoot off his S2 as long as you have it available. Um, pride, I get added to him, Pope stacks with Pride 2. Pozo Glory is good. Uh, all to the SCT again, of course. Pirate's Feast. Now, Pirate's Feast, of course, if you're using wave battles, this is pretty much an MVP skill, especially in things like multiplayer and things like story for waves. Um, getting all of your SCT back at the end of the at the end of every wave to start the next wave with full skill stocks is huge. 
Um, notably, this does not work on the first wave, of course, so you're gonna have to have find other options to get skills in the first wave, but you have we have skill charges, we have quick trigger, um, things you use like that just to add on into the first wave, but this is going to be your go-to for multiplayer story tower. This is an absolutely goaded skill. Goddess Kiss, if you need to, if, if at some point you decide you need to get MP back, which he will need MP if you are in a longer battle, um, to keep his seals being, you know, super, very effective, of course, um, this is going to be a, an MVP skill to put on him. Um, he is similar to 2B in the fact that he hits extremely hard for, extremely hard for uh, no attribute damage, so any equipping any non-attribute damage on weapons on him, we're, we're going to work very, very well. Um, damage multipliers, um, like I said with his S2, you can pretty much spam it from wherever, so as long as you're behind a boss and they're looking the other way, surprise attack and backstab are huge here. Um, he's not going to have to run around front, he can literally just on point spam for 6 SC plus 80% more damage. Um, I use these on almost all of my very effective builds, um, using manual controls to get behind an enemy and just spamming the hell out of the, sp out of the skills to do some super super damage. Sword boost you're missing, machine high boost you're missing. If you got Solaris, you can throw it on um, skill stocks. Skill stocks are one of the main things that pair with Pirate's Feast. Um, purple orb and stock skill 2 especially. Uh, raising that skill 2 stock to get to super high levels. Um, skill charge 1, 2, 3, quick trigger. If you need it on wave 1, definitely use it. Then you're looking at like damage boosters down here. Don't pass the Donald Spirit. Um, I should mention quick reload is fantastic. Um, I don't remember the chance. I think it's 10% chance to recover. 50% SE for the skill that was used. That's sick, is if the more stocks you have, the more skills you're spamming, the more likely you, you are to get skills back. So he is one of those units where you're wanting to boost his skill stocks as high as you can. Um, Sharp Eyes is nice to have. Um, of course, it's, this is going to add more MP charge for his skills, but I think it's we're pretty used to the fact that Star Sharp Eyes cost something. Um, so I think that's more of just, that's a huge damage boost for only 9 SE. Helm Master, Helm Master 2, because, uh, you know, spamming skills, it's going to combo into each other. Um, break boost here, because I'm using against Martigate, and I'm going to break him. Um, Berserker is also a good shout. If you equip Proud Force, maybe Fast Matisse as well, get that MP back, be able to uh, mitigate that HP loss. High Speed Shopkeep, that's one of my favorite skills in the game. Plus 3 speed for 1SC. Um, as to his equips, let's talk about his page real quick. Um, I think this Raven Shot is actually fantastic. Um... I, we also do not have a lot of machine weapons that are other than this that you can use very well, especially not attribute ones. Um, super nice for physical attack damage, plus 15%, critical rate plus 5%, a solid MP stat as well, 30 MP, 22 64 strength. But what we're looking at here is uh, other machines, right? Like other machines I would possibly put on him. Mecha, Mecha Cannon Beldis is going to be one of the, my favorites to put on him just for that extra damage, especially if you're not, if you're fighting Thunder Neutral units. Um, now, this is not really going to work that well for Goddess Kiss procs if they have high Thunder Res, so you're probably not going to use this. Trishula. Um, I'm not saying he needs Trishula, Trishula at all because he's not an attribute, um, but if... And, and if you're using the Stone or like um, the Fire Call or whatever they're called, um, you're, you're not... You're probably prepared already that they're going to be weak to that element. So you're not really going to throw this on here. This is more of just like if they're weak to light damage on regular attacks to get Goddess Kids procs back, sure. Scarlet Blade obviously is going to be a useful thing, but that's not a machine. Tech Blade Loop. So Tech Blade Loop is probably the other big shout that I would give to him. Um, unfortunately, this passive only really works on his S2 because it's ranged. Both of his other skills are, are, um, are close range. So as you can see, there's not really a lot of options when it comes to damage, or especially non-attribute damaging machines for him. Um, but, let's get into the sword. So I think he, he equips machines, swords, as you can tell by his art, as you can tell by his kit, he gets sword high boost for free, so you might as well use it. Pure Blade Muramasa is going to be one of your go-tos. Scarlet Blade is one of your go-tos. Um, any new non-attribute weapon is going to be really, really good for him. Um, Equilibrium Spear from the, the AR from the Vaz, if, you, if you've if beaten that battle, um, this is extremely good on him, of course. Non-attribute, physical attack damage plus 15%. Myth of Relief, if you're using a sword. Movement speed is sick. Skill damage plus 10%, it's great. Now, one thing I would say if you wanting to boost his MP, definitely throw the MP ups and then throw something with 
It doesn't really matter at damage at this point, but it's not something with MP. The Brutal the Seven Butterflies right here. It's gonna have 77 MP, that's for free. Um, but let's look at his actual paid. Outlaws Buckle, which also gives 50 MP, by the way. This is a pretty, these paids are pretty cracked on him, to be honest. Um, 500 M 500 HP, 50 to strength, 50 MP. Chance to nullify physical damage taken. I do believe this is a 10% chance um, to set that physical damage taken to zero. Boost the maximum skill st stock of third skill, bottom left skill. This is skill stock three on an item. Um, and if, you, if anyone knows anything about, like, what I talked about before, quick reload um, and arena, um, those skill stocks matter a lot. Um, now he does get three innately, three stocks of his skill three. So this will only put it at four. If he had one stock normally, then I would say this is probably a lot more effective. But even having that in itself is having an extra skill stock uh, to synergize with Pirate's Feast and Purple Orb, Council of Ten, if you feel it, um, he can get up to six stocks of his S3. Um, so kind of cool. MP plus 15% just on top of that 50 MP. Um, <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Um, but yeah. So we're going to switch this out for Myth Relief. Um, and then we're going to go fight a little Martigade. Because I want to show you just how, how ridiculous this Dragon Buster can do. Now it... Alright. Um, I got the support I wanted. So why don't we go and try it out. Um, if anyone's seen the video that I put up pretty much right after he came out about against Pablo. Um, you can see just how effective the fire and stone calls are. So I'm not really going to show, showcase that, but more showcase his Dragon Buster technique here. Um, why don't we... this... S2 just... just uh, you spam his S2 and he just obliterates everything. It, it's kind of ridiculous. One of the best skills I've ever felt in this game, um, and I'm very excited to use it. <laughs> Is man, it's like a sawed off shotgun, man. It's so good, so spammable. And we'll see in a second. This boss has like I think five or six million HP. He gets six. Um, all right, so Dragon Buster. Let's go with that. Let's break him and let's try to cap. Yeah, capping, capping, capping. Um, pretty ridiculous damage. <laughs> Definitely one of my favorite battles to fight him, fight with him. Um, of course, this is the nightmare difficulty, so I can't exactly just go into God stage and, you know, make a pretty easy showcase about it, but I mean, that's my new record on that stage. <laughs> like, I should say something. Um, but yeah. Um, now we're going to go into just a little bit of... What I think is probably one of his better aspects in the game is um, wave, not wave battles, um, but this will give you an example of, of what he can do with a full Pirate's Feast. Um, let's go to Unexpected Foe. This battle here is um, kind of just like, uh, is there's three god bosses and I kind of just use this battle to have fun with. Um, but they get pretty mauled by his damage. Uh, it's, it's pretty disgusting. Let's see, let's see, what do I want to add? I don't really feel like adding cap, honestly. I, I think putting cap on him is definitely useful, and he can cap with it. Um, I just want to showcase his actual damage. Um, I think I need to put blood. Uh, I don't think I need to put Godsire on, because Shift X bed is here, but we're going to put it on anyways. It doesn't matter. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so one thing I am using here is, is uh, Council of Ten, AER. Um, uh, it is level 9 arc skill for me, so I'm going to be able to fill up my skill stock, so that's why you'll see me be able to... Uh, all of his skill, stock, skill stocks immediately. Now, we're going to use... Let's do a Flame Call, Stone Call, one of those two. Let's do Stone Call. Um, I'm going to make them weak by using Theopolis, and then I'm going to nuke them with S2. Just a little fun, and I think this is this is what you would see in um, not necessarily in wave battles, but having Pirates Feast to get him back at, at the end of every wave. I was using him in story, and he was just 
literally just obliterating everything. It's so good. It, 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 this S2 is unreal. Unreal. That was three S2s. Pretty gross. Pretty gross. Well, guys, I think that's going to do it for the showcase. Um, hope you enjoyed the explanations of his kit and being able to see you know a little bit of him in action. Um, his wave clearing ability with S2 is pretty ridiculous. It reminds me... The feeling that I get from using his S2 um, reminds me of like a Roy S3. But it, it's not the same, of course. It's just so much fun. Um, not only that, he's extremely viable in pretty much all aspects of the game. You're looking at PvE story mode. You're looking at wave battles. You're looking at tower. You're looking at boss battles. You're looking at arena, um, multiplayer, time trials. Like He's going to be a facet in many, many parts of the game. So if you did pull him, kudos to you. Um, congratulations, you got an, a sick unit. Um, I'm very, very impressed with the way he synergizes in his in his kit and how many roles he can fill just by switching his seals. Um, and I think uh, you know we'll we'll flesh him out and figure out what he's best at soon. But I, just from first glance and from first showcase, he's a lot of fun, man. And, and if if anything in this game, and if anything you like in Gotcha. Um, having fun in the game is what's going to make you stick around so if you enjoy his archetype his his play style his art um and this is going to be your, your homie for a while like that's not a bad option dude <laughs> like for real he's he's a lot of fun but i'll see you guys in the next one uh have a good rest of your day see you